Hey everybody, the context of this problem would certainly indicate that m is a natural number or a positive integer. I'll just put that capital N here. That's obvious from the context. And um, also um, 350 uh, certainly greater than, it's barely worth writing down, but 350 has to be greater than, the, I guess they call it the lower limit. Okay, now uh, we're going to look at the more general problem first. And to me, the most intriguing thing about this is that, that you're just summing up a bunch of ones. So the one has no dependency on the index i. And the, I'm just going to do this very informally. Let's just try it out for one special case here. Um, for i equals 1, we would get 1. Excuse me, for i equals 6, we would get 1. And I'll just write it underneath uh, 6. And then... Uh, one. These can be confusing, and I remember when I first looked at this, noticing, wait a minute, where's the i? But you don't need an i, okay? Plus one, again, corresponds to eight. Plus one corresponds to nine, and also plus one corresponds to ten. And you're just running uh, through the... Uh, through the five possibilities. Now, this is the part that's slightly confusing sometimes. It looks like there would only be four ones, but there's actually five. And so another way to think of this and give some insight into the more general scenario here is you would have 10 minus 6, and I'll, I'll write that parenthetically, 10 minus 6 plus 1, right? Now, notice that in the very special case, the upper and lower index were the same. Like, say, if this were 6 and 6, you would just have 6 minus 6 is 0 is 1 because you would just, you know, again, imagine 6 and 6 right here. The answer would be 1, but that would make this 6 minus 6 plus 1, right? Okay, but so what we, what we know in general now, and again, I, 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 this is not a formal proof, but it's good enough for what I'm trying to show here. Um, this is always equal to n minus m. And I like putting the parens, not necessary really, but one of my hangups. Okay, n minus m plus one. Okay, n minus m plus one. This is always the case if n is greater than equal to one. It's trivial if n equals m because you get zero plus one, right? Okay, so let's take a look at the, let's go back to the problem. I wrote it down here again. Um, now notice that this result that we just established is going to make this easy. Of course, if you square both sides, you remove the radical, and you get this summation right here. But we just learned that this is equal to, I, I guess you can call that the upper limit, if you want to, the upper limit of the summation. I don't know if that's the standard vernacular or not. But uh, so 350... Uh, minus m uh, plus 1, okay, has to equal to this 81 right here, right? And so with just a little bit of algebra here, not much arithmetic, I guess, subtract 1 from both sides, and you get 80 equals to 350 minus m. And it, that certainly indicates what? That M has to be 280, 270. So M is equal to 270. Is that right, folks? 270 plus uh, 80 is 350. So that's the answer here. M is equal to 270. And uh, again, not a particularly difficult problem. And also, I, did, I think you could prove this by induction if you want to be formal. But to me, it's very convincing just to use one special case, and that's the same kind of thing is going to happen no matter what your two natural numbers are. Uh, just by the nature of the object here, you have one more than it appears. It's tempting to say 10 minus 6 equal to 4 done, but it's really one more than that. Now, just to, one last comment. Uh, this particular problem was actually a problem in a number theory book by Charles Vandenheinden. He was so into summation notation and product notation that he actually put this as a problem you know, in this exactly in this format, and you're supposed to write down the answers n minus m plus one. And again, 
it's pretty easy once you see it, but when you first look at it, you're going, wait a minute here, you know, there's just ones in there, and, and you're so used to seeing these summations where the sum end is some function of i rather than a constant. But in any event, the, um, the solution here is m equals to 270. Thanks for viewing.